every situation is going to give you opportunities and uh, a lot of businesses going virtual, a lot of businesses thinking outside of the box, which they wouldn't be able to before. And yeah, so I think it's providing actually more value to their clients as well. So joining me on the line today, I've got Petra Novakova from Kumuna Assist. Welcome to the call, Petra. Hi, David, and hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. And hopefully I can give you some insight in what's going on. Fantastic. So maybe start by telling us what Corona Assist is. Okay, so Corona Assist is an outsourcing business. So we've got a team of virtual assistants who are based in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Our VAs are working with small to medium businesses and helping our clients to get rid of all the low value tasks that any business owners need to do and allow them to be the expert in the business rather than being the technician. Fantastic. So with all of these lockdown and people working from home and remote, has that been a boost for your business or has it actually competed with you? It's been a boost, absolutely. I think a lot of people, I think it pushed the whole business world maybe a few years ahead because a lot of people had this uh, perception that they can't be doing meetings online and they were very stand off doing Zoom calls and things like that. But because everyone had to be working remotely these days, it's just a nature of um, thinking of maybe I I can have a VA, maybe I can have someone who doesn't need to be in an office with me and I'll, I'll have someone who helps me remotely. So it definitely helped. Great, great. So you're getting more more requests for VAs now than you were before? Absolutely. <laughs> I started the business over three years ago. Mm. So, of course, the first year in a business, you always like learning. It's always the learning phase. But yeah. definitely being in COVID, which is obviously a horrible situation to be in. But as I said, it definitely helped the whole technology and, and being more efficient in a business. Mm. So out, out, out in the business world, you speak to a lot of people who run businesses. What are you seeing that people are doing to take advantage of the current economy? A lot of people, I would say, is they're looking into opportunities, right? So there are two two type of people. So you either see it as a victim or you can see it as an opportunity to grow and maybe yeah. pivot the table or pivot the, the business into something that can be still adding value, but of course it, it's going to be online. Yeah, there's always, I believe every situation is going to give you opportunities and uh, a lot of businesses going virtual, a lot of, a lot of businesses thinking outside of the box, which they mm-hmm. wouldn't be able to before. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I think it's providing actually more value to their clients as well so yeah because i know there was a big barrier to using offshore vas because of the language barriers and the time delays and you yeah. know people were trying to use them as telemarketers and getting <laughs> calls done i think we've advanced from there haven't we Absolutely. Like my background is in Czech Republic. I've got a bit of accent as well, actually strong accent. But if you're looking into getting a VA as an example from the Philippines, their English is really good. They've got a little bit of American accent, so it's very easy to understand them. There's a very good education as well. So Mm. as soon as you're going to start speaking with a VA, let's say if you're doing the first initial interview, you will know that the perception is not always right. And the VA can be the same amount of value as anyone else in Australia. What are the traps? Like people are obviously still thinking about VAs. They've been around for a long time. They've gone through a couple of uh, cycles of iterations. And so I think that the gap is closing and people are more comfortable outsourcing. What should people be looking for when they do outsource to the Philippines? Mm -hmm. So you want to be looking into what kind of data they will be working with. So if they will be with any privacy data from your clients, such as addresses or bank details and things like that, always go through the third party provider, which is the outsourcing business. Ideally, you want the outsourcing business to be based in in or like onshore. So as an example, Corona Assis is Australian business. So they need to be, we need to be pro following privacy law in the Philippines as well, and as well as Australia. Right, okay. Right. Um, So the main thing to be cautious about is if you're doing outsourcing with a company that's specializing in a certain field, it's always better because the support will be a lot better as well. As an example, if you're going with outsourcing company for financial planners, there's probably going to be another 50 VAs who's doing exactly the same job as your VA will be doing so they can be supporting each other. So it's a lot easier. Right. So pick a company that specializes in the area that you want, that that you're in your industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So let me ask you, you've been in business for a while, Petra. What's the best piece of business advice you've ever received? I would say don't just wait for things to be perfect. I think perfect, the perfection or perfectionist is the evil of of any progress. It's never going to be perfect. So you always need to go ahead, try it, see what doesn't work and come back to it and fix it. If you're not going to break it, of course, it's working, but it's always about being the having that mindset of 
not being afraid of failing and not being afraid to not look perfect at all the times. So I think that's probably the best. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And do you read any books in business? Are you a reader? Yeah, my my definitely the best book that I've ever read was The Obstacle is the Way. And that's just changed my life. So always where there's a big obstacle, just go, there's always opportunity as well. So try to work around it. And the more obstacles you're going to overcome, the more opportunity is going to come your way as well. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, he's written a number of good books, Ryan Holiday, yeah? Yes, he's done yeah. the um, four-hour week as well, which is perfect, isn't it, as a outsourcing, about working harder, not smarter, and making sure that you are the expert in the business and you only do things that you love and then get someone else to do the rest of it. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. So let me ask you your number one piece of advice for people in business right now. Think, think outside of the box. Think where you can add more value to the clients. If your industry is struggling in certain area, there's always opportunity to find something else and how you can add value with your expertise. So think outside of the box and see if you can do things online. Try to pivot the, the, the whole business towards what you can actually do. Yeah, fantastic. Petra, thanks so much for your time today. It's great to hear about what goes on inside your head, what ticks. And uh, just get some insight. So thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks all for your time. Thank you. Bye.